on Facebook, I mean on YouTube, still got another minute. Okay, is Facebook coming through? Still working on some technical issues. All right, welcome again. Welcome to our Wednesday night live West Irving Bible study. Uh, we're gathering in, and those who are sitting around at home due to the shelter in place laws and uh, orders, thank God for you and those who tuned in tonight uh, by Facebook or by YouTube. Uh, welcome to Wednesday night live. We're in the midst of a lot of difficult days and some challenging times and some dark days, but in the midst of all that, we know God is yet in control, and uh, for the saints, there is a brighter day. So I want to talk tonight about uh, having the Lord to restore our joy. Restore our joy. In particular, the joy of our salvation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for those who are gathering by their iPads, gathering by phones, uh, gathering by their computers. As we go into the word of the Lord tonight, God give us what to say that will encourage your people to hold on to your unchanging hand. We thank you, God, even in these difficult days that seem to be dismal all across this globe. Pandemic has captured this world. The COVID-19 virus, we send that virus back to the pit of hell. We curse it now in the name of Jesus. And we speak life over your people. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen again. Well, again, welcome tonight. So glad you guys came in with us on this Wednesday night live Bible study. And yes, we have not canceled church. We have not canceled Bible study. We have not canceled Sunday school. We're just doing some things differently in the midst of this pandemic and this crisis. But notice something. The Bible lets us know all things are working together for our good. So in the midst of all of this, something good is coming out of this. What is going to happen? The church will be better after this. The saints will be better and stronger after this. So don't get weary, saints, in your well-doing. For you shall reap if you faint not. We're going to make it past this. We're going to make it. Amen, somebody. We're going to make it. And the clouds that we see will one day move out. And behind every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. Let's go to the word of the Lord tonight. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Whether you got the hard copy or you got an iPad. Uh, go to Psalms 51. Psalms 51. And verse 12. And verse 13. Psalms 51, verse 12 and verse 13. So we want to appreciate our first lady, Lady Sandra Jackson, amen, who is supporting us through all of this and standing by our side and encouraging members on the phone. She's calling members and checking on members. I thank God for the ministry team. We're reaching out to so many to make sure our seniors are well taken care of, of those who lost jobs, ensuring that they have the resources they need to get past this temporary, amen, hurdle, but God will get us over it. All right, Psalms 51 and 12. It says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Verse 13, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's a powerful verse. Those are two powerful verses. So many people today in our churches all across America have lost their joy. They've lost their purpose and they are not ready to admit it. Some are still going through the routine but have lost their joy. Notice something. The good news is David makes a request. He says, Lord, restore. In other words, restore simply means it implies that something you once had is, is coming back. Restore. Give it back to me. 
He didn't ask for the Lord to restore his salvation. Notice something. Do you know that Christians can be walking around with a name tag on saying I'm a Christian? Uh, folk can be saved and still don't have joy? David said, Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. Not his salvation. He never lost his salvation in this particular passage. He says, I need my joy back. I need my purpose back. And joy simply means, in other words, joy simply means to have a meaningful relationship with God that surpasses all understanding. What do you mean, Brother Preacher? Can you have joy in the midst of what's going on right now? Absolutely, yes. Can you have joy in the midst of losing loved ones? Absolutely, yes. Can you have joy in the midst of the economical de decline and loss of jobs? And, and about to be evicted because I didn't get a paycheck this month, can you still have joy? Yes. David's request was, Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. And I believe if all of us would admit it, at one time or another, we lost our joy. See, an example of joy is when you got married. On your wedding day, you were full of joy. Oh, nobody could stop you from being the most joyous bride or the most joyous groom. But now as time went on and years went on, did you keep that joy? Or did that joy dissipate? You were still married, but your marriage needed some joy injected back into it. I tell saints every day, God wants us to have joy and full of glory, unspeakable joy. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, if you need some joy every now and then, leap for some joy. Amen, somebody. If you get tired and beat down and depressed and don't have a sense of purpose, just start jumping, leaping for joy, and you'll get that joy right back. Amen. I feel like preaching tonight, y'all. I feel like preaching right now. But David makes a request. Number one, he makes a request based on, number one, a repentant response. Notice what he says. Psalms 51, verses 1 through 6. See, David repented. His response was, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Psalms 51, verses 1 through 6. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy what? Loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Then he says, Blot out my transgressions. Blot out my sins. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. David took ownership of his sin. He didn't push it under the rug. He didn't act like nothing was going on, but he admitted it. He repented because he wanted his joy back. You have to understand, to get your joy back, there must be a repentance coming back to God. God, please restore me back. I lost something. I lost my joy. I lost my purpose. I'm going to church. I'm going through the process, but have no joy. Saints, that's a pitiful place to have a Christian in with no joy. Then he says in verse 3, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. He took ownership. He acknowledged what he was doing wrong. Against the only, only Lord have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speak it, and be clear when thou judge it. Verse 5, Behold, I will shapen, I'm sorry, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Verse 6, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inmost parts, and the hid parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So the first step David did was to repent. To get your joy back, the joy of your salvation, you must come to God and say, God, here I am. I take ownership of my shortfalls. Sometimes it's easy to blame everybody. You know, blame the bus boy. You know, blame the cook. Blame the waitress. I mean, the waitress didn't cook the food. The mm -hmm. chef cooked the food. You blame them, you're blaming the waitress. And uh, she just brought the food out from the kitchen. We like to pass the blame. And we give the waitress all kinds of fits. 
and the guy that messed up is in the back in the kitchen. We have to take ownership of what we have done. So David began to ask God to forgive him. Then he says in verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy multitude of thy tender mercy. He brags on God. See, he, he can brag on God because you know what God has done for him. You can brag on God in these dire days, these difficult hours. I can still brag on God. You can make boasts of what God is doing. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go where? Into God's house. I can still brag on God. Where are you going? I'm going to God's house. Y'all remember Big Mama's house? Well, I'm going to God's house because in God's house, there, is, there are blessings. In God's house, there is favor. In God's house, there is riches. In God's house, there is purpose. So now he brags on God before he repents. He lets God know, I know who you are. You are God of tender mercies. Blot out my sins. And he confessed his sins. He confronted himself with sin. He looked sin in the eye and said, sin, get out of my life. God blotted out. The second thing David did, he makes a request for restoration. Not only did he repent, but he makes a request. The Bible says, make your request known unto the Lord. He knew where he was. And until you realize, I got a problem. They always told me, when I was coming up in school, it says, half of the problem is recognizing that what? You have a problem. You can go all day long and not recognize you got a problem. You will never get it solved. David recognized, I have a problem. And he says, Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. Notice something. No one ever recovers their joy until they request it. You never recover your joy until you request it. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Saints of God, if you want God to do something for you, ask him. I mean, I understand the scripture says, so is a man thinking in his heart, so is he. That's not talking about asking God for something that you need him to do. That's an attitudinal statement. So is a man thinking in his heart. That's based on your attitude. You can think yourself poor. You can think yourself broke. You can think yourself not worthy. You can have low self-esteem, and that's who you're going to be. But he says, ask anything according to his will, and he heareth us. So David makes a request. God, restore the joy of my salvation. What is joy again? A meaningful relationship with God that supersedes circumstances. Oh, yeah, you can be happy with a diamond ring. You can be happy, amen, with a new car and a new house, a new job. But once that job is taken away from you, do you still have joy? Once the car is gone, do you still have joy? He never lost his salvation in this particular part. He needed his joy back. So many Christians are walking around with a Christian tag on themselves, but have no joy. You can't get along with people. You're mad at everybody. You don't like people. You can't stand people. No, joy is one of the nine fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit are love. The second one says joy. Come on, somebody. If you don't have joy, you need to ask God to restore your joy. Amen, somebody. You may have a gift of laying, laying on of hands and speaking in tongues, but no joy, you're just making a lot of noise. Come on, somebody. I'd rather have the fruit than the gift. Oh, I wish I had somebody right now. Everybody wants the gift. Want to be a wonder. When I laid hands on sister so-and-so and she fell out. When I came into the room, my presence just, no, no. It's the God presence. He wants us to have the fruit to exemplify the character of God. Those nine fruit represents God's character. The gift represents God's power. Notice something. The fruit represent his character. 
The gifts represents God's power. So get the fruit. Then the power will come right on time. So David makes a request. Number three, he understands the reason for his request. Why did the psalmist ask God to restore his joy? Sin, disobedience had run its course in David's life. Y'all know David's story? The sin with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. David had the young man killed, tried to cover up his sins. When you cover your sins, you won't prosper. He recognized his shortfalling. That haunted David for a lifetime. What he did haunted him for a lifetime. Even after repenting of that ill will, he still had to carry that burden to his grave. He lost his joy. Saints, don't let your past sins beat you up. Don't let your past failures haunt you and run you down. What happened 20 years ago, God erased that from your history book and blotted out all of your transgressions. Don't let anybody bring up your past. And if by chance, if the devil reminds you of, his, of your past, remind the devil of his future. He's doomed. He's destroyed. There's a lake of fire planned for him. Take your joy back. Take your purpose back. Those of you who, who miss in church and you've sat at home in a pitiful place when church has been congregated, now folk want to go to church and they can't go. When you had a chance to go, you sat at home, you found other pleasures of life, you found other things to do, and now you want to get back in. You lost your joy before you stopped coming to church. You lost your joy before you stopped congregating with the saints. You lost your joy. Take it back. Ask God to restore your joy. Don't let any circumstance, whether it's family, situational, don't let anything stop you from doing what God has called you to do. No man, I don't care how many people wrong you or speak evil against you. The Bible says in the book of Matthews, it doesn't matter how much they do when they speak evil against you. The Bible says what? Rejoice. And the word says, be exceeding glad. I'm going to say, be real glad. Amen. Act like you really don't care. Because really, in the end of the day, when folk talk about you, that means that they, they must like you. Because the more time, the more they talk about you, means they got con they're concerned about you. They have interest in you. If they don't talk about you, check, check out. Maybe you are not doing something to raise questions. They, they talked about Jesus. They talk about you. They talk about me. But the Bible says when they talk about you and speak all manner of evil against you, what? Falsely. Make sure the evil they're talking is false. The Bible says rejoice and be real glad. Now, that word real glad really takes that word and makes it be joyful in what they say about you falsely. Because God in you and you in God, amen, is nothing but joy, unspeakable joy. And the last thing, what are the results of restoration? Oh, I like this. What are the results of, res of restoration? There are two major results in the context of this scripture. When he says, Lord, restore my joy. Then he says in Psalms 51 and 13, then will I teach the transgressor. See, when you get your joy back, now you can teach the sinner. You can teach the transgressor. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways. Oh, thank God for joy. If you have no joy, you're not going to share your joy. If you have no peace, you're not going to share the peace. If you have no purpose, you're not going to share purpose. But thank God when you get your joy back, now you can teach the transgressors. We can teach the sinners. The reason why so many sinners are going to hell because the church has lost its joy. And we're not teaching, we're not witnessing, we're not sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with the transgressor. We're too busy thinking about our problems. We're licking our wounds and feeling sorry for ourselves. Yes, all of us have issues and troubles, but I thank God trouble doesn't last always. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning time. None of us are exempt from COVID-19. 
There have been Christians and saints and beloved ones who have been victimized and lost the battle to COVID-19. But the Bible lets us know to be absent from this body, to be present with the Lord. Those who've lost loved ones, if they were saved, they're going to get their eternal reward. We're not exempt from trouble. We're not exempt from this earthly death. We're not exempt from pain. But I thank God that God will carry us through and he will get us on the other side. Of, and if we're going through, stay in the middle of through. Don't get out of line. Stay in through. Because the other side is the other side of through. Amen, somebody. Don't try to get out of through. Lord, keep me in the through. I'm going, I'm going through. No matter what the case may be, I'm going through this. We're going through this, saints. We will win. This battle is the Lord's. It looks difficult. It looks painful. To the Lord. I'm shouting right now because the song says, don't wait till the battle is over to shout. We can shout right now. And as the countryman said, we can shout right now. Amen, somebody. We can give God praise for the victory is already ours. So David says, restore my joy so I can teach the transgressor thy ways. I can show him what the ways of God are. And right now, the church is in a great position. Man, we're in an awesome position. we got a great platform. Not to be arrogant. Not to be disobedient. Amen. Not to be combative. But to let the world know, in all that's going on, I want to teach you God's ways. In all that we see as bad, I want to teach you the statutes of God. What's in it? What is God telling us through all of this? He's getting us ready for that great day. Who shall be able to stand? Sinners will be running on that great day. Liars will be running on that great day. He's getting us ready for that great day. So the results are we can teach the sinners God's ways. And then number two, sinners shall be converted unto thee. Wow, I like that. We teach them what? Teach them what joy means. Teach them what the Holy Ghost means. Teach them what serving God means. Teach them the statutes of the word of the Lord. And then when we teach them, the Bible says, the sinner wow, shall be converted. That's why the church needs joy. That's why the church needs our joy. Because sinners need to hear God's unadulterated word. If our joy is gone, we can't exude and show joy. Get that joy back. Oh, God, get that joy back, and you become a soul winner for the Lord. You become a powerful witness. Acts 1 and 8. Amen. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come, and you shall be what? Witnesses. In other words, I got joy to witness to that lost man. In the grocery stores, when folk are walking around and don't want to touch nobody, and they feel like this, oh, they don't want to, everybody walking around like zombies now. This is a sci-fi movie. Walking around, don't want to touch nobody. I understand we keep our six feet. But because of sin, that's why we're in this situation now. If the world had come to God on their knees and turned back to God, he would have turned this wrath away. So we're in a situation now where folk are not sure who they took talking to. Do they have the virus? And we're in a bad situation. But I thank God he's going to take us through. God will get us through this. Even our weary saints. The race is not given to the swift. Nor the battle to the strong. But he that endure it to the end. The same, the Bible says, shall be saved. What we're experiencing right now is simply prophetic. In the word of the Lord. And I, I taught a class two weeks ago on indicators of the end time. And somebody saw it on Facebook and asked me to teach their church in Mississippi. So I did a prayer call on last week talking about the indicators and the signs of the end. What we're seeing is simply the signs of the end time. But thanks be to God, the scripture says, who always causes us to triumph in him. Saints, we got the victory. Don't give up. Keep your joy. Does it look dismal? Yes. Does it look gloomy? Yes, but behind the gloom, amen, 
There's a winning team. Behind the dark cloud, there's victory. Behind the shadow and the storm, there is a silver lining. The sun will shine again. The sun will come out. Not just the S-U-N, but the S-O-N is shining his glory because I thank God for his joy. His joy, unspeakable joy, and full of glory. Well, these last few minutes were intended to encourage you to hold on to God's hand. While your families are gathering around the house, uh, stay in, saints, unless you have to get out. Uh, just stay in. Uh, so much is happening. Uh, this is a good time to regroup with your family. Get reacquainted with your family, your children. Uh, Tic-tac-toe. I was playing on uh, Zoom last night with my children in California, my grandkids, and we were playing tic-tac-toe on Zoom. I saw all their faces, and uh, we got a chance to have prayer and just greet the family. Um, but just spend this time in prayer at home with your family, reading and consecration. Some of y'all need some rest. Get the rest you need. Uh, all things work together. Some of y'all are working from home and you're saving on your gas and saving on toll. It's working for our good. Devastating, yes, but it's working for our good. And God will get the glory out of this. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and those who have some questions that you want to uh, enter on uh, Facebook, I will check and see if I can see your questions. Amen. Let me see if I can see any questions. Anybody got any questions? Or go ahead and send those questions in, and we'll see if we can see them. And I'll have my tech guy to give me the questions. If you see any questions, any questions, any questions? I got my tech guy is over there looking at his pad. Any questions about tonight, about joy, about asking God to restore your joy? I want God's joy. His joy is full of glory. And the Bible lets us know out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. I got the joy, 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 joy. Where? Down in my soul. Down in my soul. Where? To stay. I got the peace that passes understanding. Where? Down in my soul. Down in my soul. To stay. Anybody got any questions? All right. The saints say all minds are clear. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your grace, for your mercy toward us. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. What you did for us, we could not do for ourselves. And yet, God, you took time and you you came to see about us. You sent your son. We were alienated from the household of faith. We were outcast. Lost eternally. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believed in him should not what perish but have everlasting life. God, you gave us life. And you gave us a right to the tree of life. We were doomed for hell eternally lost, outcast, but you brought us in. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us in out of the cold. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and making me a part of your family. I pray right now, God, that every person that hears my voice, that they who don't know Christ in the pardon of their sins will come to him tonight. We are living in the last and evil days. And nothing else needs to happen but the rapture. And any moment we can be snatched out of here. God save the sinner. Save the backslider. Reclaim them back. And God, for those Christians who've lost their joy, for whatever reason, restore our joy. That we can be a light that set it on a hill that cannot be hid. That the world can see Jesus and say glory, glory to the King of glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. I want to invite you tonight to uh, continue to support the ministry. Uh, even though we're not here as a congregation uh, on Wednesday night, our young people are not here for youth Bible study, and uh, the, the teenagers and the children, 
but we can still gather through social media. One pray for Sister Pam. Okay, uh, Pam, the musician. Yeah. Yes. We got a request to pay, pray for Sister Pam Johnson, Sister Pam Johnson, who resided here in Fort Worth for years, and now she's in Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, Pam Johnson was our musician uh, several years ago on Grimes Road. Pray for her that God will heal her body. Pray for her. She's going in for surgery. Pray for God's healing hand to touch her. Sister Pam, wherever you are right now, we speak healing over your life. We speak God's anointing over your life. You are a chosen person by God to do his will, and you still got too much to do. What the devil meant for your bad, God has flipped it for your, for your good. And I decree healing in your body. I expect a great testimony of victory and healing in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Pam. I hope you're listening and you're watching. Wherever you are, we love you with the love of the Lord. You are my sister. And we thank God for Sister Pam. You are a precious, precious woman of God. And, and those who need prayer, other prayer requests. On yesterday afternoon, we had noonday prayer. And so many people came in with prayer requests. And we prayed, and we prayed, and those who prayed, God bless those 13 to 14 people who led prayer yesterday. Y'all really blessed me. The pastor didn't lead prayer. Y'all led the prayer from West Irving. And it was such a blessing. And First Lady Jackson closed it out. I was blessed by the powerful one-hour prayer. We'll do it again on next Tuesday. But you can also support the ministry tonight. You're sitting at home. With all, those all over this country, you can support West Irving Church of God in Christ. Uh, we do ministry not just in the church, but outside the church. Uh, we're feeding people, we're housing people, we're clothing people, we're visiting the sick, we're going to feed the homeless, uh, we're going into the jails and the prisons and the halfway houses on a regular basis. Up until now, but you can't visit a nursing home, you can't go to the jails, amen somebody. Uh, we can't feed the homeless downtown like we used to, but we're making all kinds of adjustments to make sure we still get the needs met of those who need. Uh, we're giving out food at our church during the week and produce. We're still partnering with other organizations to make sure if you need something, you can get it. So don't feel like nobody's caring about you because of the shutdown. The church is still alive and we're still working. If we have not canceled church, we just made an adjustment. Amen, somebody. The Lord said you're going to do greater things. And I believe this social platform gives us a broader reach, an expanded reach to reach more people. So you can give to the church and support the church in your tithes and your offerings. Uh, you can simply go to the Givelify app or go to Givelify and, and find West Irving Church of God in Christ. There's an app called Givelify. If you don't have the app, find it on your phone. Just find the, the, the website. Go to Givelify. It'll take you to where you need to go to direct your contributions to West Irving Church of God in Christ. There's a link already on there. There's a link already on there. You can look at the link while you're watching. You can see the link. It's already on there. Go to that link, and uh, you can donate to the church. Also, you can give off the church's website. Go to westirvingchurch.org. You'll see a picture of my wife and I. She makes me look good, y'all. She makes me look real good. Mm -hmm. And uh, find the donate button. God bless you, Sister Jackson. You're watching at home. I love you, baby. I love you. But uh, go to donate. And you can donate your tithes, your offerings. You can give the missions. You can give the outreach, Sunday school. And do that tonight. Even though we're not gathering as a congregation. And sometimes giving, amen, decreases when people are not there. But I'm hoping that you will sustain the church ministry by constantly being a support to the ministry. By your giving, your tithes, your offerings, and support, because God will bless you back. I got a, a call on yesterday, after the prayer call, one of our church members, and she don't mind me calling her name, amen, Lacey, Missionary Lacey, Texas, said, Pastor Jackson, I had a light bill that was almost $200 and got an invoice in the mail, something happened, and it went down to $45.
Can you imagine a $200 light bill being reduced to $45? I can shout on that right now. I'm going to dance on that for you, baby. Can you imagine that? So God is doing things. She had just paid a contribution and tithes and offerings. And that very week, God flipped it around and reduced. Somebody said, God did it. Yes, God did it. Whether or not they made a mistake at the office, or whether it slipped through the cracks, God allowed it to happen. So God will put money in your bank account. Amen. He'll cause people to say, I don't know why I approved that loan for that man. His credit ain't that good. But we still, God will cause the king heart to turn toward you when you're faithful to God. Amen, somebody. He will bless you beyond measure if you trust and obey him. You can also give, if you don't have a, a social outlets to give, and you don't like using uh, the social and the electronic methods, you can write a check and send it to the church. West Irving, Church of God in Christ, Post Office Box, 842. Want to write a check? Amen. I, we welcome checks. West Irving Church of God in Christ, Post Office Box 842. Post Office Box 842, Bedford, Texas, 76095. You can still write checks, money orders. Amen. We are doing work for the ministry, even though we're not here as a congregation. The ministry must still go on. So God bless you tonight. Hope you prayerfully consider being a supporter. Uh, those who are not members of our church, you're watching us live, you can support the church. We will certainly honor your re, uh, donation and give you credit for it. Uh, simply give by Givelify. You can go on our website at westirvingchurch.org or you can mail the check to West Irving Post Office Box 842, Bedford, Texas 76095. We got some exciting things going on this week. Tomorrow night, the children's ministry will be having their children's lesson and uh, uh, on Zoom. Uh, our sunshine leaders, um, Mother Rosa Brule and Sister Sabrina Beach, with their team, will be gathering our young people, the sunshine band, those who are 12 and under, in their Thursday night uh, Bible study on tomorrow night. And so they'll be going in by Zoom, and they can watch each other interact and ask questions on tomorrow night. And then on Saturday evening, Saturday evening, uh, we have not canceled Sunday school. We just moved it to Saturday night during this uh, adjustment period. Sunday night, I'm sorry, Saturday night Sunday school will start at 5 p.m. Uh, you can go to our Facebook page. You can see the various classes. They are staggered classes beginning at 5, 5 o'clock. We have the teens, 5 o'clock we have the children, at 6 o'clock, we have the men and the women. 7 o'clock, we have the adults. And then there's another class uh, for the married couples on this Saturday night. So there's a class for married couples. And then the last class is for the young adults at 8 o'clock p.m. So we've got classes being in session, even though we're not here together, but we're still connected. What the devil thought he was going to do to destroy us, he just made us better and made us stronger and given us more resolve. So keep watching your text messages and keep watching your Facebook and information coming from the church about activities going on this week, tomorrow night, Sunshine Band classes and children's ministry, and then Saturday afternoon at 5 o'clock, uh, the Sunday School Hour, Saturday Night Live, Sunday School. Uh, God bless you. God bless you is my prayer. And let's continue to pray for those who are suffering across this nation. We have lost so many, so many people. I personally know across this land have passed on because of this virus. Let's pray for the family of Mother Worsley. Let's pray for the family of Bishop Wells and pray for the family of Superintendent Kevin Jones and pray for the family of Bishop Robert Smith and Robert Harris, family of Pastor Lett, the family of Elder Fred Davis. Let's pray for these families all across this land that have lost loved ones in Michigan, Louisiana, Mississippi. Pray for Bishop T.T. T. Scott there in, in Mississippi that God will restore his strength. Pray for Bishop John Sheard and his wife and the Sheard family. Continue to lift them up in prayer all across this nation. Pray for Superintendent Melvin and Lady Sandra Simpson there in Kansas. Pray for that whole jurisdiction. 
God, we are praying for this thing to go back to the pit of hell. Pray for Deacon uh, Oscar Wynn. Pray for that family that God will heal and deliver and set free. And Father, as we close out this Bible study tonight, where are you sitting in your homes? Uh, just pray with your family as we close out this prayer. May the Lord watch between us, me and thee, while we're absent, one from another. That's the prayer. My wife was saying the other day, we're not together as a congregation. And that benediction prayer means so much more now. Lord, watch between.